Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to another reaction video. Today we're going to be watching, reviewing, and reacting to episode 3 of AMC's interview with the vampire. Okay, before I get into this, just quickly want to say a big thank you and a shout out to The Coldest Water for sending me this pretty awesome insulated water bottle. Um, keeps your water cold for up to 36 hours, hot drinks up to 12 hours, so really very useful and great for somebody like me. They are having a Black Friday sale throughout all of Thanksgiving, so if you're interested in checking out their products, I'll put a link in the description box below, so just a thanks to them really quickly. Now, interview with the vampire. Um, if you guys watch my first two reactions, you know I'm really thoroughly enjoying the series so far, and as a big fan of the books, um, that is a huge relief to me, so I'm really excited to progress with this, keep moving forward. Um, I am going to be, based on you guys' feedback, I'm going to be putting full-length reactions to this episode and all of the rest of the episodes of Interview with the Vampire this season up on my Patreon. If you want to check it out, I also do have some exclusives, series, and movies available on Patreon, like Rings of Power, um, The Expanse, Season 6, I have Prey, I have Barbarian, I have Scream 4, I have Nightmare on Elm Street, so there was lots of good uh, Halloween-y related stuff up there um, at the moment, but yeah, do lots of fun exclusive things up there, and cat pics too, so <laughs> if you're interested in checking that out, anything that you do want to support the channel with, it goes a long way and is a huge help. But I also do just appreciate you guys being here and the positive reception of the first two reactions, so I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm going to be eating some popcorn <laughs> as a heads up. Sorry, it's a... Uh, I've had COVID for like the past two weeks and I'm just finally getting better. And I, I'm like, I need to eat. <laughs> so, so we're going to be snacking. So hopefully you guys don't mind too much. I'll try not to make it too obnoxious. But I'm really excited to get into episode three of Interview with the Vampire. Let's watch it together. Is my very nature that of the devil? All right, so I'm prepared for some Louis suffering and confusion this episode. I prefer that, don't you? Mm -hmm. The Louisiana Purchase was signed to Pennywise, Funk, Foolish. <laughs> Say anything about how they used to take runaway slaves, cut the heads off, and pike them on the iron gates as a warning? I'm only halfway through this. <laughs> Do you ever think that we, that's oh to say our kind, create the heart of thoughts buried beneath my damned soul? We can eat animals and be okay. Rats, cats, cattle. Is okay what you desire, Louis? Mm -hmm. Shall we walk the night as the gods of easily attainable dreams? I desire easily attainable. God as much as you do. But I wonder, should we be more selective? You know. What? Only eat redheads, the humorous? <laughs> Define your terms. The worst of Yeah. Way. And how People would we who go about deserve it. that? You lose our powers. Read their minds. Hunting is pure envy. Everybody Oh so my stupid. god. Yeah. He steals from unfortunates, breaks into tenements, and robs them with their meager possessions. And does that meet your satisfaction? I don't mind the shaking. I've snapped his spine. It's merely his nerves spasming. Lestat! Well, go on. Use your criminal biscuit. See how it tastes. Eat before your reason or his heart fails us. Oh, no, 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 no! Sorry. I'm with Lestat on this one. You know that guy's an asshole, and he's already gonna die. Like, Lestat has already killed him. Alright, I get it. Okay, I'm sorry I'm being a horrible human being right now, but. Cats. Heard about the Azalea all the way in Atlanta. And then they're like. They're talking about the high and dry huh. few days in the start to come bridge. If I'm not mistaken, he improv the melody for what would later become the Wolverine. Oh my god. Wait, whoa, 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 hold on there. You're saying Lestat <laughs> wrote the Wolverine Blues. I can't be definitive. 
so much of that year was a blur. That's, and you can that's imagine funny, just thinking. Inevitable just some little hints about Lestat, the musician. This. <laughs> it's giving me pause here. I mean, 1970. Ooh, is he going to bring up the old one? Twenty twenty two. It was a cold winter that year, and Lestat was my cold mm. fire, and I found myself for the very first time to anyone other than Paul confiding my struggles to another man. San Francisco. Frail and stupid. I love this. Dry twigs with a thin carping voice. And is is Louis about to compare I Daniel's memoir to truth to anyone, much less a man? Or the more rehearsed. Hmm. Perhaps I was mistaken about the Wolverine blues. Hmm. Fuck the Wolverine blues. Ken Burns can choke in the footnotes. It's the abused abuser uh -huh. psychological relationship I mean, I'm talking about. I do not consider myself abused. I mean, usually when you're a little too close to it, the abused still loves the abuser. <laughs> but you flipped it completely on it was the opposite way 50 years later you talk like he was your soulmate huh. like, like, like you were locked in some fucked up gothic romance what do the employees at the azalea say about louis and lestat i'll answer with a question are there two beds <laughs> upstairs or one do you want to find out no one goes upstairs miss brown well there's my answer Sir. Yeah. What do you imagine confines us to a single note? Mm -hmm. The stats like cord. maybe I'm open to I all say, possibilities. I'm the same. I like all sorts. I like See for yourself. A dentist from Tallahassee. He didn't kill her. There's a dentistry convention in Now town. Louis is really gonna Sinister be jealous. Sinister talk of molars and bicuspids around every corner. Oh, no, no. oh God! <laughs> Don't laugh. No. <laughs> Don't laugh. Louis. Start is like, listen. I like a little variety. I'm a bit older than you. I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm I not so that. monogamous. We're communicating so much better now. No? He's like, are we? Hold on, I didn't say I agreed. So I can fuck uh, whoever I want. Oh god. He's like, wait, of course. Like, wait a second. Of course. Wait of course. a second, but what if, baby. As long as you come home to me. I just want to own you and have my cake, because I'm Lestat. <laughs> Oh well, lord. This is so fascinating to me that they're fidelity. going this way because of course it is something in the American books that troops. vampires don't have sexual desire any longer. The they just have the bloodlust. So like all of the actual physical the relationship between Louis and Lestat once they're vampires went into the and the sex that they're having with other people that's an addition that they put Google into the show. So okay, I'll talk about that later. Hastily composed Feel like a boot on my neck. Hmm. He's one man on the council of seventeen. Lewis. Yeah, but he's known Maybe him he's for still a while. Sideways cause I turned down his fifteen mm -hmm. percent. And because he used to say some shit to him. Yeah, I'll admit, I prefer the days you let us win on occasion. <laughs> days of deference. What is it? You ever think about those old days? When we were kids. Oh, is this a was, was this a little a little couple nights? Teenage boyfriend? The boat over the ocean. Little. Me and a couple thousand other fellas were in. No ring on your finger. Not a woman. Hmm. Well, what's he like? Hmm. He's a lot? a lot. That's a description. It's not perfect. Hmm. But we kinda have this agreement. Uh-huh. <laughs> One of those you can drive out to the bayou. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yep. Bite himself instead. Oh. Oh. You found me, you know. Oh Lord. Went to my old house on Esplanade. Grace told him where. Louis. An old love. Yes. 
Louis is not built for this. He's just not 16, built for any of this. I was older. We don't. Oh God. Coming off a little hot, no? I ain't come here to see you. I didn't come here to Lou. see you. No. Came here They're to see you. Get That's the girls. Why you didn't get so paint the girls. All right, Louis, calm down. Go to your home. Oh. But I tell y'all, there he is. There he is. <sighs> Great. Great. Messed up part Get about out. how Lestat actually warns him about he would end up hurting them and hurting himself if he stayed around, but. Lestat, of course, is being manipulative and doing it for his own purposes, but at the same time, he's not wrong. Holy shit! What a creepy-ass power he's got. That's so creepy. So creepy. I'm not perfect. I knew it. I knew you were there. Him. Yes. You jealous? Yes. I don't like Sherry. I knew it. What about Antoinette? It's different. I don't have feelings for her. He did me some face and I drove him home. I heard your heart stand Oh, there. God. You watched the whole thing <laughs> like some creeper. And then I watched you pull over and drain the dog and run down an alleyway for two more rats. This is not a life. That's because you took my life. I got nothing. I lost everything. Me and Ann Louie, you dumb pimp who got robbed blind years ago. It's been the break, I'm afraid. You're about to die. Oh, God. Did you sell me the azalea because you knew this day was coming, Tom? You put a sir on the end of that. No. And he sold you the fair play for a price you set. You ain't answering my question, Tom. I'll be happy to buy the property back from you. Say, <gasps> 15 cents on the dollar. <gasps> 15. When your mother sees the devil in your eyes, it's a hard assessment to abandon. Here it's coming. Am I from the devil? It's my very nature. You haven't accepted <laughs> your place in this world. Place is a vampire. a lover with this seemingly endless supply of cow water. And how fortunate it is that they're away <laughs> in your winter home. It is fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you reload. Oh my god. <laughs> oh! 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 You said I'm arrogant? <sighs> Maybe I am arrogant. <laughs> what are you? I'm a vampire. I mean, yeah, this is this is not a surprise right here. This is not a surprise. Executed with such a plum. I didn't do it for me. I did it for my oh, city, my people. Oh, Louis, Destroyed don't even, yeah, don't even. If you did it for your you people, look at what's so happening. That torturous death was for your people. Uh, Lestat knows. The display of his body like some public art piece was for your people. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Since they go for the throne. And that's why you and me ain't ever gonna work. Oh. That's why you're always gonna be alone. Holy shit, okay. All right, maybe. I ran from the quarter that night. One of those inconceivable moments where who you were before and who you This be is where he's gonna find Claudia! My light. My Claudia. My redemption. Oh. That's how the episode ends! Oh!
Okay, that was episode three of Interview with the Vampire. Where to begin? Okay. Another great episode. Um, I think it's very interesting the changes that they're making um, as it comes through in this adaptation. Like, to begin with, and I mentioned this in the actual reaction itself. In the books, okay, once you become a vampire, you don't, there's no sex, there's no actual lust that leads to physical consummation sex, anything along those lines. Um, it kind of translates into bloodlust, and there's still a great deal of romance, so there's a lot of, of homoeroticism and romance and, and passion. Um, but once you're a vampire, you know, with the exceptions of some body switching and things that I'm not going to get into. Um, and then we are late, later on, okay, there's things, but sticking with the now in this part of, like, the books, there's no actual sexual relationships happening anymore, and there isn't lust in those ways. So it's interesting um, that they've decided to completely get rid of that and go with the full-on sexual relationships. Um, you know, I talked about this with the first episode, that I thought it was good that they were just going full-on, they weren't just having there be like homoerotic undertones, but they were actually having this be a lover relationship um, between Louis and Lestat. And, but I, it wasn't really until this episode that I fully understood that they were saying that they were still like actually having sex, like they were physical lovers like that, as opposed to like the the metaphorical lovers that that we get um, in the books. And yeah, it's an interesting choice because it certainly lends them to kind of have somewhat of a more more link to humanity, I suppose, because that's one of the things that, you know, once you become a vampire, that is, was gone. Um, and now with this, it's not. So I think that allows there to be something that continues to drive Louis in particular. And you see Lestat with it, but okay, it's, it's not like in the same sort of seriousness that it seems to be for Louis, particularly because, of course, Louis in, in him is always having this struggle with his identity and his sexuality being a big part of that um, in the show, whereas Lestat is like very fluid and open. Um, but it definitely, it, it allows more interplay of like the jealousy angle, which I think they're doing a good job with here. It was it was pretty crazy when Louis was first kind of like vulnerable and saying, am I not enough for you? And, and Lestat just basically laughs hysterically, like, are you crazy? And <sighs> the way that he was doing it, it could come across as just completely callous and be like, of course you're not enough for me. I'm a vampire. I've lived all this time. You know, one, one other being is never going to be enough. But I think there's more to it than that. It's more that he was laughing at the ridiculousness of of Louis kind of implying that whatever this this dalliance he had going on was anything akin to the relationship he had with Louis. He's like, you are my, my vampire companion who I chose, my dark companion that I want. Uh, and these are just like brief flings that I don't even think about. Um, but then of course it gets turned on its head later with the, um, with the arrival of Louis's former flame and Lestat suddenly realizing he's completely jealous, which I predicted, by the way. I said it was definitely going to turn out to be one of those situations where Lestat is like, oh no, I'm not monogamous. We can have these little uh, other things. It's totally fine. But the second that, that Louis actually did, he's like overwhelmed with jealousy because Louis is his. Only his. Only he can have him, right? So it allows them to play that up more. Um, that also, I think, makes it more interesting for, for Louis' kind of self-discovery, ongoing path. Um, the other kind of big thing this episode that I found super interesting is the play back and forth on the concept of memory, which we see in his discussions with Daniel, where Daniel's basically pushing him and, and even like playing clips from the older interviews and saying, 
Are you sure? You know, you were pretty disdainful of Lestat before and say he was nowhere near on your level and all these sorts of harsh things. And now you're talking about him as though it was this grand romance. You know, what is it? And, you know, Louis tries to kind of throw it back at his face and say, well, even just look at the lines of your own memoir. You know that memory can play tricks. You know, and he's like, just allow me to have this. But it kind of it kind of makes you wonder, um, especially because Daniel brought up the abuse angle, which is, of course, very relevant, even though Louis just kind of brushed it off. Um, but one thing that I, I find interesting is it, it's putting us in a position where I think we kind of regularly have to question the telling of the tale, which they have set up from the beginning of the series. So I think they did a good job setting it up, but this episode really played into it quite a bit. And especially because, so the guy that, that Louis hooked up with, did he say his name was Jonah? Maybe. Um, so he claims that he met him again later in life. But then when Daniel pushes him and says like, well, what happened? What was it like then when like you had not aged and he had, and Louis just kind of says, oh, what it's always like, and then goes back to the story he was telling and it, like, we're supposed to just forget about that. But then we also saw like the muddy boots there, Lestat's muddy boots, and we know that Lestat followed them and watched. And you kind of have to wonder, you know, if he met him later in life, are they going to show it again? Or is that a false memory? Like, did Lestat kill him? Like, what happened? Like, I thought when I saw the boots that he definitely killed him. But, you know, you never know. Maybe he just followed him. But Lestat doesn't seem like the, the type to hold things in very well. Um, and then, so then the other big change from the books that was really highlighted this episode is how Louis ends up coming to terms with... Um, accepting himself as someone that wants to drink the blood of humans and that he can't just continuously feed off animals. He can't, like, he can't repress the urges enough um, and how that is tied to Claudia. So, of course, in the books, it's very similar to what you see in the film, if you've watched the film, where he's trying to repress his urges at all times. He's doing what we see him doing throughout the course of this episode with like arguing with Lestat and hating his existence for what he is. And, you know, even even trying to come up with ideas of maybe we can look for bad people that deserve it more, but then he can't even bring himself to do it. And he's just wallowing in this state that and the Lestat is just disgusted and disdainful of. Um, but then, he he basically has a moment of extreme weakness um, in the book and when he finds Claudia after and her family has died of plague and he ends up drinking from her um, and then Lestat ends up turning her of course to kind of like keep Louis with him as a, as a manipulation tactic but in this, instead of like a moment of weakness where he ends up preying upon this young girl, and that is the guilt that is always in the back of his head. Instead, it's a moment of rage and I'm not going to take this anymore. And just the, the culmination of years of racist mistreatment and being manipulated and lied to by these people that he goes full out and just embraces the, the darker side of him at least for a moment, um, but then it's the consequences of that moment for his community um, that that is going to lead to Claudia being in danger and to him coming up and being with Claudia, which I guess next episode will show Claudia becoming a vampire and how this actually happens. I don't know if she's going to be like on the verge of death from the fire or what's going to happen but he saves her from that he takes her he's going to take her away and that's going to be the beginning of that and Lestat of course is going to use that to his advantage especially after Louis basically just kind of threatened to break up with him and was like this is why this is never going to work because even though Louis has that momentary you know just giving in to all of his urges and becoming exactly what Lestat would want him to be or fantasizes about him being the guilt that he feels in the aftermath because of the consequences to other people is so much for him that it seems like he's just wants to get away from him, even though it's, a, of course, this is a turning point for him and that he's not going to just keep feeding on just animals constantly all the time. But 
So yeah, some interesting changes, but I think I, I enjoyed it overall. Um, very curious to see the Claudia stuff now. I'm excited to see what they do with this character. I know she's been aged up, and obviously her backstory has been changed. Um, but from what I've seen from you guys in comments so far, you seem to be pretty pleased with her. So I'm excited. I'm more excited than nervous. I was pretty nervous going into the series as a whole, but so far I'm extremely pleased. So, all right, got to wrap this one up here, guys. If you have questions or comments, please do leave them down below. Thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.